We're going to take a look at the correct procedure for removal and then installation of the injector sleeve or injector cup. Different manufacturers use different names for them. In this particular case, we're calling this an injector sleeve. This injector sleeve actually sits into the head boss and then is surrounded by coolant to take away some of the heat of operation of the injector. Now there's also a lot of heat right here. Now this particular manufacturer uses what's called a direct injection direct injection injector. So when it's installed in its correct position in the engine, it actually comes through the sleeve, through the head boss, and then is in the combustion chamber area. And on a diesel engine, the combustion chamber area or the clearance volume is made up by the relief or the bowl, mixing bowl area of the piston. In automotive applications, we tend to have the combustion chamber in the cylinder head, and sometimes it's part of the makeup of the piston head with the combination of the cylinder head. So when this is installed in the correct position, we need to make sure that we don't allow any combustion gas or compression pressure to leak by here and coming out, come out the top. So there's a washer that gets installed in the correct position and this is a compression washer. It goes on the end of the injector and then when the injector's sleeve is in the head then we install the two together until it is in its right position. Then we have a lock that locks the injector down and then there is a dust boot that goes over top. So when a technician is diagnosing this, he may not necessarily disassemble the running engine. We're looking for a failed or leaking injector sleeve. It can leak two ways. Compression pressure and gas leaking by the compression washer and coming up the top. Okay, the other one that can happen is the coolant leaking by the top of the injector sleeve. So we have to put a certain type of sealant, and I think it's 262 Loctite, that actually locks this into place in the cylinder head and provides some sealing capacity also. It's a interference fit, which means this is larger than the hole in the boss of the head that we're putting it into. So the next thing is we need to take a look at the engine and then see what we need to do to actually take this apart. So if we look on the top of the engine, you can see here's our injector sleeves that are pressed down into the respected positions. Number one and number two need to be replaced because the end of this has been damaged and it will not provide a flat mounting seal with the injector compression washer. So if we take a look at how it sits on the inside, this would sit flat on the inside and then the injector would actually come down like this. So we need to have a nice flat surface here on the inside of this sleeve to promote the sealing of the injector. So these ones are damaged and we're gonna have to remove them and then install brand new sleeves. So first thing we have to do is take a small amount of rag or paper towel and I'm gonna stuff it down inside the hole. Reason being for that is when I use my tap I'm going to start to cut debris and I don't want it to fall into the engine. So in this particular case, I'm just going to put my tap in and use an appropriate tool to drive it. And I'm going to start to cut some threads into the injector sleeve. I'm going off center a little bit, but I'm not too worried about it because we're not reusing this again. And normally you would always, when you're tapping, is go forward and go back. So I'm going to continue on this so that I create a nice clean thread in the bore so that I can put my puller apparatus in there and then pull the injector sleeve as required. So you can see how much of a chore this could actually be when you're doing it in the chassis because now you'd probably have the cab in the way and so on and so forth. So we've actually got enough material tapped in there now. And there's lots of debris on top of it. So I'm just going to wind this bolt down into position. And snug it up. Just have to get it to start into that sleeve. And then we're going to put a puller adapter onto it. And 
And then we're going to install our puller. And then making sure that our hand is in the correct position so we don't hurt our fingers. And we're just going to pull the sleeve out. Okay, and you can see my bolt kind of went a little wacky when I pulled it out. You can see some of the, the sealant that was on there from the last install. But this, at this point, this sleeve is no longer serviceable, so it can just go in the garbage. So we want to do an inspection here again, clean the bore. A little bit of brake clean on a rag. Make sure the bore looks good. And then we can even have a quick look down inside. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our new sleeve and we're going to put on the appropriate uh, sealant, which is 262 Loctite by manufacturer's recommendation. And I'm just going to smear this around to give us a nice film coat on it. And this provides the sealing of the cooling system with the interference fit of the sleeve in the cylinder head. So now I'm just going to put it into position. And then we have a driver that goes into the sleeve, through the sleeve. Now the important part is, is when this is being done, that the pistons on that particular cylinder are lowered. Because it's direct injection, this driver is actually going through the sleeve. And when it's going through the sleeve, if the piston's in the way, because it's direct injection, we could potentially drive this anvil into the top of the piston, creating damage. So it's important to make sure the piston is down, which it is. So we put it back into position, correctly position it into the cylinder. So now we got the driver in position and then we're just going to tap it down into its correct spot. Now this tool will bottom, which indicates where the tool ends up. Okay, so you can see it's slightly below the surface. There's lots of sealant around there and that's going to provide the sealing that we need to have for the new this and then we would have a lock that holds it down into position and then our fuel return and supply lines would be installed. Now there is also a dust boot that goes on the top so when technicians are checking for these leaking what can be done is the dust boot can be pulled up and soap and water can be sprayed on a running engine and freshen leak you will see it bubble. So that's one way of diagnosing that the sleeve is damaged. Now a quick and easy way to actually remove that washer is one, sometimes they do come out on the injector, but if it doesn't, in order to get that out, so in order to get those compression washers out, if we just use a tapered punch, we can just push in and then it fits directly onto it so then we can always get them out. One thing that happens sometimes in the trade or even here at the college is when students take these apart, they neglect to take them out. So when they put the new one back in, assuming that they need new ones, they stack them. If they stack them, then there's not enough room for the hold down clamp and we actually torque it down and concave or convex, depending what side you're looking at, we actually pull that injector sleeve, now making an uneven surface and we will have no sealing capacity. So again, make sure every time you pull them out that it is out of there and then we can do a visual inspection of the sleeve and determine do we put new washers in. In most cases, we're always gonna put new washers back in to promote a good seal when the injectors are removed and then replaced.